31, let's revisit this idea of finding the x and y intercepts specifically for a line. Uh, they work for any function, but in chapter four, we're looking at lines. And we had this whole blurb, this entire thing was literally on section 2.1, the very first section we did in class together. But a common phrase in math is two points determine a unique line. Two points of interest for this section will be the intercepts of the lines. And we will be finding intercepts algebraically and using them to quickly plot graphs. So let's just remind ourselves what an intercept is. So an intercept of a line is any point where the line and an axis or axes of the coordinate system intersect. There are two types of intercepts of a line sketched on a coordinate system with an x and a y axis. Okay, so an x-intercept of a line is a point where the line and the x-axis intersect. The y-coordinate of the x-intercept is zero. So just take note that the x-intercept, the opposite letter zeroes out. On, on the flip of that, uh, a y-intercept of a line is a point where the line and the y-axis intersect. And the x-coordinate of the y-intercept is zero. So again, opposite letter zeroing out. To remind you of what the graph of this concept would look like, let me scoot this up, right? If you, you can kind of see this line shaded in, it's a little tricky because it's photocopied, but here is the y-intercept. We typically call that zero B, right? Usually B is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. And for lines, they will have at most one x-intercept as well, and we might call that A comma zero. Now, this extends beyond lines. This is a parabola-ish looking function, but you still see there's an x-intercept here. At, well, they're calling this, this graphic I, I stole from Google Images. They're saying negative a zero because they're implying that a is positive, but the negative sends you to the left of the origin. Here, I would just say a was itself a negative number. Um, but anywho, here's the y-intercept at zero b. I, I don't see the rest of the graph, but it wouldn't surprise me if it came back through this way and we had a second x-intercept. And once we move beyond lines, when we move into quadratics and even higher degree polynomials like cubics and quartics, we will start to have multiple x-intercepts. But you will only ever have one y-intercept. If you had more than one y-intercept, your relation would fail to be a function. All right, so with that, we're gonna take a look at another line. We just graphed lines in examples six and seven, one by plotting points, and another using the slope and the y-intercept. Now we're gonna find both of the intercepts. I wanna just find the x and y-intercept and use those as the two points that determine my unique line. So let me go ahead and scooch this up so we get our whole problem in view. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're running with this. So first of all, I'm, I always find y-intercepts easier to plot. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the y-intercept first. The y-intercept you can either read right here as six, or at least the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate of the y-intercept is six. Ooh, let me scoot this down. I guess we can't quite see that function. All right, there, now we can see the fraction. Um, so the y-intercept in this case would be zero comma six. So let me go put that point on my graph. I'm gonna label and scale these axes. And I'm gonna to go to zero, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now again, you could use the slope and figure out the graph of the line, right? We could use the three halves to move up, down, left, and right, depending on how we wanna move. You could just make a table of values like we did in example six and, and, and plot some other points. You could use your calculator and its table function and plot some other points. But I've been asked to find the x-intercept, so let's go ahead and find it. Let me put a little bit of a division line here, a separation. So we're gonna say x-intercept, I always wanna let y equal zero, which in this case means let f of x equal zero. So here, I wanna let my function itself, three halves x plus six be equal to zero. Well, if I wanna solve that, I'm gonna move the three, excuse me, move the six over and get three halves x is equal to negative six. And then I wanna divide by three halves on each side. So I'm gonna find out x is equal to negative six divided by three halves, which is like saying negative six times two thirds. And when I play that out, right, this is six over one, so this will ultimately be negative 12 over three, which is negative four. 
All right, well, that would tell me then that the x-coordinate of my x-intercept is negative 4 and the y-coordinate is 0. And if you were having a bit of trouble with that fraction arithmetic, go ahead and use your calculator. Do negative 6 and divide it by 3 halves. But I do want to make mention you need to be careful and put that denominator in parentheses. It makes a difference. So here I get negative 4, and I just want you to see what would happen if you didn't put parentheses around 3 halves. And then let's talk about why it would pop out a, a different number. So if I need, or if I just divided negative 6 divided by 3 halves and I didn't put the parentheses around it, you see your calculator doing negative 1. Because what's happening here is it's taking negative 6, dividing it by 3, and then dividing it again by 2. So I want you to hear it did division and then division. But I want you to see what really happened. When I did negative 6 divided by 3 halves, I did negative 6 divided by 3, but I multiplied by 2. You see this 2 is up in the numerator. That's not what's happening if you enter that expression into your calculator. It's not going to divide by 3 halves. It's not going to multiply by the reciprocal. It's going to divide by 3 and then divide by 2, and that's why you're getting a different number. So just be careful when all of that is happening. All right, so let me go ahead and put my x-intercept on the graph. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I see my two points. I only need two points to determine the equation or the graph of a line. So there we go. All right. And in terms of domains and ranges, we've said this a few times, but for every non-vertical, non-horizontal line, the domain is always negative infinity to infinity, and the range is always negative infinity to infinity. And the domain, let's, let's think about it, right? I do have a fraction, but this fraction's denominator is never zero. It's always two. Okay. So I don't really have any fractions I need to worry about. I have no radicals and I have no logs. So the domain's going to be negative infinity to infinity. You could also see that because this arrow goes right forever and this one down here goes left forever. So you see me lighten up from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, right, this arrow is down forever. This arrow is up forever. And I've got no breaks, no pieces, no nothing in my line. It's continuous, negative infinity to infinity. All right, I do want to practice graphing a horizontal and vertical line, so we're going to do that on the next page. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.